Although that's still a nice shot. It's really hard to take a bad photo, a bad portrait with an 85, for sure. For almost eight years now, the one focal length that I've never stopped using is the 85 millimeter. I first fell in love with this lens when I rented it for a photo shoot and I was immediately blown away by how sharp my images were. Sharpness I've never seen before. It also has a certain look where some would say their photos and videos look more cinematic. While that's debatable, there's no denying this kind of lens makes any close-up on any subject look flattering. There's something magical about it, for sure. Just ask my friend Professor Hines. He uses his so much there are literal battle scars all over his 85mm. It's been used a lot. So what makes this lens so special? Why do we highly recommend it over everything else? And what photographic application is it great for? Let's find out. To say that this lens is incredibly popular for portraits is an understatement. It is widely used for headshots, weddings, and even close-ups in movies. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. The 85mm is said to be the most flattering for human subjects, especially for faces, because it doesn't distort them. However, what I think most people love about the short telephoto prime is its ability to blur any background and make them far more interesting. Just take a look at a few of these backgrounds here. It's captivating. The bokeh is incredibly alluring. That's the effect that telephoto lenses have in general. They pull background elements closer to your subject, creating a nice backdrop. And when we shoot at a wide open aperture like f1.8, it blurs the background beautifully to center the attention of your subject. This is preferred especially when we're capturing portraits in unideal environments where there could be a lot of distractions. Being able to blur those distractions anywhere, anytime just makes our lives a lot easier. Now, some of you might know Professor Hines for his incredible portfolio on street photography. And it's no secret, we love the 85mm to capture the people going through the mundane city life. It somehow makes the images more interesting. The 85mm being a telephoto lens allows us to keep our distance to be unobtrusive. So in some ways, street photography is a little like portrait photography, just candid photos of people going through their daily lives. But the 85mm flatters more than just people. Now many people wouldn't think about utilizing an 85mm beyond portraits, but I actually like utilizing it for cityscapes and landscapes. In scenarios like these, most beginners would opt for a wider lens. I need to be further back, I need more reflection. But we're gonna show you the difference between capturing a cityscape with a 35mm or an autofocus continuous versus the 85mm. Ooh, nice. gorgeous. Now you could essentially get the same shot with a wider lens. The difference is it pushes away my, my subject back there, which is the clock tower. With the 85, I can still encompass a lot of what's here on the street into the frame, but I had to back up. If you're shooting like with Vivian, which is a 35 millimeter equivalent, everything that's around where she's shooting is bigger. The clock tower is the smaller subject, whereas mine, the clock tower is the biggest, but then you just see all this other stuff around it that's surrounding it. It kind of puts everything on the same kind of perspective in my shot as opposed to hers, but it's not to say there's one that's better than the other, it's just vastly different perspectives of what you get from a 35 in this case as opposed to an 85. So as you can see, the 85 millimeter is a lot more versatile than you think. So let's talk about what kind of 85 millimeter you should look out for. Now in this video, we are using a full frame camera, but depending on the type of camera you already own, the 85 millimeter may not give you the 85 millimeter view to view. Let me quickly explain. If you're using a smaller sensor APS-C camera, you will need to take the one and a half times crop factor into consideration. So a 55 millimeter ish lens will give you roughly an 82 and a half millimeter full frame equivalent view to view look. If you uh, try to mount an 85 millimeter full frame lens on your APS-C body, that would roughly give you a 127.5 millimeter full frame equivalent look, that would end up looking a tad bit too tight. Now the reason why we also love the 85 millimeter f1.8 so much is because of its size. Compared to other telephoto lenses, especially a 70 200 millimeter, the 85 millimeter strikes a great balance in size and weight while still offering that amazing compressed look. And you may have noticed that we're using an f1.8 version and you might ask, why not an f1.4 or an f1.2? 
Again, it comes down to saving weight. The F1.8 strikes a great balance in size while achieving comparable results. But also because over the years, 85mm F1.8 lenses have become a lot more affordable. And you can especially save even more money by shopping used for a pre-owned 85mm from our sponsor, KH Camera. KH Camera is a reputable site to shop pre-owned camera gear from. Everything that comes their way gets thoroughly inspected and all backed by their 180-day warranty should something go wrong or 21 days to return if you end up not liking it. I know we're highly recommending the 85mm, but everybody has a different taste. So if you end up not liking the 85mm, you can return it and get something else. And they also offer additional product protection in partnership with Extend. To learn more, check out my link down below to get 5% off your next purchase or 5% more when you sell. Thanks for listening. Now back to the video. So what can first timers expect when they pick up an 85 millimeter? Oh yeah, we're gonna have to back up a lot. You will be taken aback, quite literally, how close everything suddenly becomes, especially if you're coming from your kit lens. And with no way to zoom out other than with your feet, it can feel frustrating. But we promise you, if you're willing to take the time and you have the space, the results you'll get with an 85 millimeter will absolutely be worth it. That and a uh, pack a complimentary wider lens, like a 24 millimeter. Now throughout the video, we talked a lot about blurry backgrounds, but blurry foregrounds can also elevate your shot. So I'm gonna aim out here towards the bridge. We're here along the canal. And I'm gonna take one shot that doesn't have anything in the foreground. Pretty standard, pretty basic photo. It's pretty decent. But let's try to add a little bit more sort of creative element into it. Let's kind of liven up a boring composition a bit by having that foreground element. So as you can see, there are these trees that we're underneath right now, and we're going to use that to compose our shot and just give you that more depth in the frame. And then that's our shot. So that's what we had before, and that's what we have this time. It kind of adds a little bit to our frame to where it's like, it draws you in a little bit more as far as what's happening in the frame. See if you can find something nearby of where you are to reframe a composition that you have to add a creative element in the front of it. One other tip that we can offer when using an 85 millimeter is to utilize depth. Photographing anything against a flat wall is going to look pretty dull. Oh, that, that's still a nice shot. <laughs> You, you know, you can't, you can't make a bad photo with the 85. I think that's the lesson here. Yeah, it's really hard to take a bad photo, a bad portrait with an 85, for sure. <laughs> well, never mind. Apparently, you cannot take a bad photo with an 85 millimeter lens. That just goes to show you why this lens is the best. But if you want to prove us wrong otherwise, tag us in your next bad 85 millimeter shot, and Professor Hines and I will take a look. For now. So that's one. And then Vivian, I'm gonna have you come out and we're gonna shoot this at 2.5. So it just gives you an idea to the differences with them. It actually is really hard to take a bad portrait with an 85, as, as you can see, because both of these work significantly well, but they just give you very different feels for what you want. Do you want something where you have a nice majestic background and you throw it out of focus behind your subject, or do you just wanna have something that's plain and just keep all the attention on your subject? up to you as far as what you do. As you can see, depth can add a lot more dimensions to your photo, and it helps your subject pop even more. And you might have also noticed that the professor isn't always shooting at f1.8. You know that saying, just because you can doesn't mean you should? In fact, the professor himself isn't afraid to stop down to f8 just to get the shot. Because depending on the distance, shooting everything at f1.8 might have unintended consequences like losing the context of the environment in your photo. Now look at the difference between the 6.3 shot and the 1.8. This is why I don't shoot wide open for all of my shots. Because we can't tell what the hell is in the background here. It's just a, a big blur. But in 6.3, we can actually see more of the environment. So that's why you want to play with your aperture. Even if you have a prime lens that's 1.8, 1.4, 1.2 even, don't use that for every photo because it doesn't always complement the entire composition the way that you think it will. By the way, we have a free one hour course on photography. We do? We certainly do. Call the ultimate guide to street photography, which you can watch here on the screen. Tag us on your next 85 millimeter shot on your preferred social media at Jason V Media. At Professor Hine. And we will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Now, who are the hosts of this street guy that you speak of? We are, silly. Let's go. 